Bienvenidos a México. I'm Sari from Mexico City. I like Mexico because I think you cannot find the same places uh, like beaches, the food, the people, and another place of the world. The people is happy and they always treat you like very kind and very uh, like friendly in a friendly way. So this is Ohana. It's the first cat in the boat, <laughs> in this boat. <laughs> Welcome to another update from Elixir's voyage around the world. My name's Max, and over the last three years, I've sailed from the UK all the way to the Pacific coast of Mexico on board my 37-foot sailing boat called Elixir. I've had a lot of different friends join along the way, and as we sailed up the coast of Mexico, Elixir felt a bit like a floating youth hostel. We decided to spend a few weeks in Banderas Bay, where there are both colorful seaside towns and a big community of sailors. We had a sad moment as we said a final goodbye to one of Elixir's oldest crew members, and then we made a load more friends who somehow convinced me to have a swinging party on board Elixir. This would be our last stop in the Americas before setting off to cross the Pacific. There was a lot of work to do on the boat, including some exciting new additions, before we could wave adios to Mexico and cast off on our biggest passage yet across the Pacific. It's a rescue mission. There's, I just saw like some trash floating in the sea and then I looked beneath it and it, it's like attached to a turtle. So I'm gonna try and see if I can take it off. See, if we, see what we can do. You're gonna go and be a hero. Yeah, I'm gonna be a hero. I'm gonna rescue the turtle. <laughs> turtle rescue baby. mission. I can be your hero, baby. It's definitely not a turtle, it's definitely just a boy. Yeah. 100%. Is the turtle okay? How did it go? Not, not a turtle. Is the turtle alright? No, no sea life is in danger. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I need to sleep, I need to sleep. Yeah, finally. We can rest easy. So I just learned something really messed up that they knew it wasn't a turtle the whole time. Taking advantage of someone's like kindness, it's just like really <laughs> cruel, honestly. So it's been almost three years since we left the UK and since then we've ticked off almost 7,000 miles. If you could tick the subscribe button and put a smile on the faces of the Elixir crew, we'd be very grateful and it helps out the journey a lot. Thank you. We're about to sail to Punta Mita to go surfing. It's just around the corner from La Cruz where we are at the moment. It's got, um, Hannah back on board and Jimena. If you recognize these two lovely people. The California Cornwall connection. Yeah, Elixir's, <laughs> the LA part of Elixir's crew. We've got Jimena here working Hi. remotely. Working remotely in a bikini. One of the... Don't post this. <laughs> They're gonna know. Just kidding. They're know. gonna find it. Now you're on holiday, it's all good. It's your day off. It's a Sunday. You're allowed to work on a Sunday. Sunday, yeah, yeah. it's a Sunday. <laughs> Beautiful Sunday, yeah. sailing to uh, Punta Mita. Banderas Bay is actually 15 miles wide and there are several different anchorages around the bay. We visited a few different spots, all of which were very scenic and the wind and the weather seemed to always be perfect. Everything was going great until Elixir let us know in her own little way that it was time to take a break from sailing and get started on the long list of boat jobs. Yeah, so it looks like the main sail that has taken us from the UK all the way to the Pacific coast of Mexico has come to the end of its life. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's ripped completely the length of the sail. So yeah, I'm gonna have to take that down now and figure out what we're gonna do. Um, because, yeah, maybe I'll just take it down to third reef. It's insane. So because the rip was below the first reefing point, I was able to take the mainsail down to three reefs. And we can still sort of sail, although it is quite slow. I don't think we're going to be able to take off on any longer passages until the new mainsail arrives because, um, yeah, sailing around on three reefs, unless it's blowing like 20 knots plus, it's just, um, it's just pretty slow, but for now it seems to be working. With a ripped mainsail and a long list of other jobs, we dropped the hook near the town of Punta Mita, which seemed like a great place to stay for a few weeks and get some work done on Elixir. What's going on? So this thing is our bimini, or sunshade, or awning, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, as you can see, it's made with bamboo, which we got from Panama, but because that was quite a long time ago, it snapped. 
yeah, we need to replace the bamboo. So we picked this stuff up in Yalapa, which is just across the bay. Some nice green bamboo. Nice, it's so strong and flexible. It's actually a really cool material to use on a boat. Like a lot of people will use big bits of bamboo for spinnaker poles. People build all sorts of stuff from bamboo, but we're just gonna use it for this bimini to make some I don't know, <laughs> bits to hold it out so you get a nice well, shade in the cockpit. Yeah. So. Cool. We've added our new bamboo poles onto the bimini and as you can see it actually looks great. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. Voila. Very clever design. A line going up to the mast. And now the lines are gone from the side so you can easily get in and out. Do you want to demonstrate? It's incredible. Beautiful. An emotional day because it's time to put Ian to rest, unless someone decides to give him a new life, a new lease on life. But at this point, Ian is pretty much completely deflated and uh, he's, he's passed away. He, he's ready to uh, be put to rest. So, barco gratis in Spanish means free boat. And we're gonna take him to shore one final time. How do you feel about it, Max? Honestly, I'm relieved because now we have a new dinghy and we don't have to worry about Ian, the inflatable, falling apart at any moment, which I feel like is a genuine worry. Like when you have an inflatable boat, it's always leaking water in or air out. Sometimes it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. And Ian's done well, like he's, he's been used hard for like three years. Yeah, I'm very proud of him. I mean, his time on board Elixir has come to an end and he's probably gonna live in Mexico now. So we're gonna see if we can find him a new owner. There's a lot of good memories. I have with Ian and I love him. I love Ian. Yeah, he's gonna be missed and everyone's very proud of him and the work he's done. All those people that have sat in him with wet feet and smelling of petrol and RIP Ian. We're proud of you, Ian. Bye, Ian. Thank you for everything. I'll never forget our first time meeting in Curacao to pick me up, actually. And then we went and got groceries and it, I should add to that album. I think yeah. you have it. Um, good times. And if nobody picks up Ian in the next couple days, we're gonna find a bin. Yeah, and just it is. so you know, we're not just people know we're not just leaving him. Yeah. Yeah. We're not just leaving him randomly here. If nobody gets him, we'll we'll find a place to throw throw him away. Exactly. It only took a few hours for Ian to find his new Mexican home. Unfortunately, we soon discovered that this home was in someone's backyard and it didn't look like he'd be back on the water anytime soon. We're back at the boat and we're gonna go surfing at that wave that's just about a mile away dinghy ride. Nice surf. One of my favorite things about Banderas Bay is the selection of different surf spots that you can reach within a short dinghy ride from the boat. Mexico is a mecca for longboarders. We found a handful of fun, easygoing point breaks and I was so glad that I had a longboard on the boat to make the most of the long, mellow waves.
This spot was especially cool as it appears like it was inaccessible from land, but easy to reach with the dinghy. There's nothing like surfing an empty wave with your friend, even if it is only knee high. My foot! My f <laughs> it was nice to stay in one place for longer than a few days. We quickly found a friendship circle made up of Mexican people, backpackers, surfers and other sailors too. Everyone seemed fun and open-minded, so I did something that I'd never done before and organized a swinging party on board Elixir and invited all of our new friends. My name is Jana Jala. It's my stage. <laughs> Do you have her sign the waiver? <laughs> Do I get $2 insurance did for she, this? Did she sign the release waiver? I'm already? totally down for $2 sign, sign insurance. Did you sign it? I did, with my blood. Alright, what, what are we about to go and do? We're gonna go spinnering. <laughs> Spinnering. Spinning? Swinging! Swinging! Swingers! Swingers. Swinging! This is actually a swingers party. <laughs> this is what happens when you own a sailboat and you're a kid without parental supervision. <laughs> We're rigging up the spinnaker out on the halyard with one line from clue to clue and we're gonna sit on it and swing out inside the boat. <laughs> Theoretically. Theoretically. What do you think about it, Brooke? What? I think it's gonna be fun. I've done it before. You've done it before? Yeah. You got an experienced member. So we'll see who can do the coolest dismount. <laughs> There's dismounting. <laughs> can I just fall? You'll say ready and then we'll release the retrieval line and I have uh, no idea how are we releasing? <laughs> No, it just flies and you're on the right. Oh, I'm on the right. I thought I was going to be in the... So you're just like... Alright, so... Hold on to the retrieval line because that's what's keeping the kite from flying forever high. <laughs> I got you, girl. Oh, that was cute. Ready? <laughs> Am I gonna die? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you can you can kinda like trim the kite so you're trying to keep it filled. Oh, okay, okay. So you'll like pull to keep it open. Woo! Oh, 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 <laughs> so now try and keep it filled. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. Now do something cool! This is cool! <laughs> It's your turn. Okay, I'll go. Okay, ready. You want to come more to the left? Well, oh, <laughs> You're almost there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. The swinging party was definitely a success. I had no idea that you could have so much fun with a spinnaker. All you need to do is stern anchor the boat so that the bow is pointing away from the wind, rig one line from clue to clue, and a second retrieval line, and then hoist that sail. It was a great turnout. Pretty much everyone in the anchorage was on board Elixir at one point. I'm glad I listened to my friends and will definitely be having more swinging parties in the future. As the 
the season for Crossing the Pacific began, it was time to put an end to the fun and get serious. One new exciting addition we had for Elixir was a water maker. This clever machine makes drinkable fresh water by pumping salt water through a very fine membrane, a process called reverse osmosis. The system is relatively easy to install and I'm hoping it will be a real game changer in the remote islands of the South Pacific. After quite a few days of trying to figure out how to install the water maker, I think I finally got it to the stage where Everything's wired in, everything's plumbed in, and we're ready to go. We have the the fresh water discharge here, and we're just gonna put that into bottles and tanks for now. And then the discharge water, where the salty water comes out, is just gonna go probably over the side of the boat or into the cockpit or something. But I'll show you what I've done. Seawater comes in here, goes through this filter, which is like a strainer, um, before passing through the pump, which is this thing here. So this is the pump and that pumps the seawater through this finer filter, which is five microns. Through this thing, the pressure cu pressure accumulator, I haven't really figured out what that is yet, but I think it's just to protect the water maker. And then finally into this water maker, this is the main unit here. Basically then the, the salt water is pushed through a membrane, which filters out the salts. It produces the brine, which comes out here. This is the wastewater which is just going to go out through the cockpit drain and then the fresh water which comes out here this blue pipe so yeah we're going to switch on now and fingers crossed it's gonna all of my connections are good and it will work the first step is to turn on the seacock so this is the seawater intake and this is an on off valve obviously we shut it off when we're not using it but i'm just going to turn it on which will bring the water through to the pump hopefully Okay, so the first time we run it, you have to purge the air from the system through the filter. And I haven't tried the pump yet. It should be wired in place. I've wired it into the switchboard. Yeah, Chloe's going to switch it on now and fingers crossed. Okay, go. Oh, sh**. We just did a little test and flushed the system out. It seems to be working pretty well. So now we're going to try and make some drinkable water for the first time. Chloe, go. Ah! Let's see the pump running there. Shall I try it? <laughs> Do you want to try it? Yep. It's perfect. <laughs> Is it actually? Yeah. No salt. Cheers to that. <laughs> Looks like Max had a little bit of an oopsie. And uh, we're, <laughs> you don't want to talk about it, Max. We've got a little treasure chest over here, right by the head. But cleanup crew. It's like a baby trap. So we just did our first provision for the Pacific crossing. We spent about 500 pounds in Costco. And this is what we came back with. We've got nuts, we've got tofu, we've got roots, we've got rice, we've got crisps, we've got beans. Yeah, so this is just our dried stuff. We can do a separate shop where we get all our fresh provisions. Oh yeah, and the most important thing. 200 tea bags, just chamomile. Hopefully that'll be enough, um, but I'm not sure. We've also stowed away 150 litres of fuel for our cooker. The water maker is installed and yeah, the engine serviced, the rig serviced. All that's left is to get our hands on the new mainsail, which is going to be delivered hopefully tomorrow by Alex. Max, I think we need a new sail. <laughs> <laughs> Got a few holes. Alex has just brought back this, this big blue bag here. And this is, this is our new sail gifted by Precision Sails in Canada. And obviously, as you can see, our current mainsail is pretty much in shreds. Done. R.I.P. How old is this sail, Max, do you think, more or less? Like 30 years, probably. Yeah, and we did loads of repairs on it as well. The whole leech of the sail is just like patches that we've put on. Like there's one there, there's another one there, there's a big one there. Here. There's oh, I rip. did this one. <laughs> That's just like a, a whole new rip that I didn't even know about. There's a patch, <laughs> there's a patch. So yeah, this is like the last big thing that we need to tick off before crossing the Pacific. And yeah, we're excited to get it set up, see what it looks like. Thanks, Precision Sales. 
<laughs> yeah, big up Precision Sales for gifting us this mainsail. Precision Sales did a very tidy job on our new mainsail. It was so clean and white, I couldn't stop looking at it and smiling and it felt very satisfying hoisting this immaculate sail for the first time. Unlike Elixir's old sail, this one is half fully battened. So like the top half of the sail, the sail battens run the entire length from the sail to the mast. We should give it a much better shape. I'm putting the second batten in. These ropes, which run through these eyes in the sail, are what we use to make the sail smaller when the wind increases. So, as the wind increases, to stop overpowering the boat, you make the sail smaller and smaller. Um, yeah, and that's what these lines are for, the reefing lines. How does it look? Fucking good. <laughs> So we're doing our test sail from Punta Mita to La Cruz. This is our new sail. And we've got some friends with us. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got Cole sailing next to us. The sail fit great and it seemed like we were very close to the end of our jobs list. All that stood between us and 3,000 miles of open ocean were a visit to customs and one final trip to the grocery store. And in a few days, Elixir would be leaving on the biggest passage of the journey so far. Thanks again for watching another one of our updates. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. If you want to sail on Elixir, then sign up to our Patreon to be the first to hear any crew calls that I'm going to put out in the future. And also check out our merch, organic cotton, water-based ink designed by Layla. They're great. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next video.